All right, hi everybody, uh, it's Brent from New D Review. Here we are again on the couch. I don't have my glasses on, and I haven't taken a shower, so I want to show you my do. It's got this cowlick, I don't know if you can see that. Anyways, I thought I'd uh, talk about that, because that's where the name came from anyways. Uh, new do, hairdo. Okay, so, what are we gonna? What are we gonna do? I feel like uh, as we get into this uh, deeper, that uh, I'm gonna keep talking about how how the format is, um, how how we structure this. So we're looking at the last video. It's pretty long, uh, and it was intentional. I wanted to just talk for a long, long time and just go for it. And I still want to do that, but I want to uh, keep things maybe structured a little bit. Uh, and you know create a format so I become a little wiser with the limitations of this camera I'll Talk about the camera in a second too, uh, but it only has about an hour 20 minutes of uh, memory, so I'm going to set a timer For about an hour and ten minutes or so so that I know When to stop talking and wrap it up I've had my porridge so I am good for a little while. I got some water in my Rubbermaid water bottle, which I'll keep as my affiliate link so that if you want to buy that water bottle, you can. It's, it's a really good water bottle, actually. Uh, Anti-leak, apparently. And uh, that's true. It, does, it doesn't leak. Uh, okay, so we're already off topic a little bit, uh, but I've got a list made of some of the things I want to talk about. Uh, so that we can cover uh, a lot of it. Um, so, we, the format, let's get into the format. So I feel like I'm going to address the format uh, probably at the beginning of uh, every video. Because things, things will change. I don't like being uh, pigeonholed artistically. I like the freedom to change. So I don't want to get stuck in a Skinner's box where something gets... Uh, 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 popular and I have to do the same thing over and over and over to get the same popularity. But I may have to, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a psychological uh, thing when it comes to getting viewers. But I, I, I like to be able to do uh, what I want. <laughs> it's artistically selfish, but I, I don't care. It's my channel. I'm going to do what I want. So, so that's that. So I'm gonna, I'll talk about the format probably every video so that uh, when you tune into the next video, you'll you have an idea where we go. So, uh, it, I guess in a way, that's its own format, a, a continuously changing thing. Uh, and I like that. that. That'll keep things interesting. Uh, and maybe we can talk about that as a, uh, as, as a concept musically later down the road. Change, uh, you know, evolution. Uh, you know, reinventing yourself and, and whatnot. I, I think those are important. Uh, okay, so, yeah, format, we've uh, already talked about that a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll recap what happened in the last video. So if you watched the, the last video, uh, the, the Bloody Waters, of the, the Drop Shippers and Flippers, uh, unusually a sea-ocean-based uh, name. I wonder why. I don't know. Um, th that was fun. That was, uh, I thought it was interesting to uh, get that out of myself so that um, the video exists for the future. Maybe as a way to uh, kind of imprint a an opinion that will be different when things change I in the future, I guess. Um, uh, so, so I, I guess that that's why I wanted to do that the way it is. But also another thing too, uh, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of di digital uh, entrepreneurial uh, business ideas uh, th that I feel do need evaluation uh, to some degree. So I, I think that's another uh, motive as, as to why I did that. It's just so you know you can evaluate something critically, talk about it openly. Uh, Criticize it. Criticism is, is, is a good uh, thing when it's done uh, in a certain way. Uh, you know, I, I can't be sure if I did it in the right way, but uh, that's what I kind of want to keep talking about so that the dialogue can keep going and, and change along with it. Um, but, but being critical of uh, things 
especially business ideas uh, in this day and age, I just I think is important because you, you don't want to take things uh, too literally, uh, sort not too literally or not at face value. You, you just you want to bite into it a little bit and and uh, criticize it. But but criticism, uh, when you think about it, it's it's uh, it's for the audience. It's it's actually help. Uh, an audience or a group of people uh, understand what something is too. Uh, cr criticism is not really f uh, for the, uh, the the practitioner of that thing that you're criticizing. It's for a group of people. So, yeah, I think that's important. Uh, and also know that when you criticize something, you, you don't. It's not to to be negative, but it's to be critical of an idea to explore uh, the, the logic of the idea. And how 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 it can stand? Because you you want to you want to shake a monkey tree and see if a monkey falls out, you know. So you know when you talk about uh, something like that uh, th through a dialogue of criticism, uh, you're shaking a monkey tree, you know. If and uh, you know whatever falls out is important to to reveal. Uh, so so there's that. So that's going to be. I, I want to embed that into the format, and maybe I'll, I'll sort of keep addressing that as we go along because you know there's bound to have things pop up there's tons of content being made about uh you know new, new business ideas uh, d digital uh inventions i mean it's it's pretty fantastic uh it's very impressive um you know so that's really my feeling towards towards uh, those sorts of things that i see it's it's like wow that's really cool but they still need to be uh, scrutinized and um, thought about Okay, so I think that's about as much as I'll say towards that. The next thing I'm going to talk about uh, is something aimed at content creators themselves. Uh, when I'm with these videos, I want to be able to have this information apply to a wide audience, uh, to, to people who aren't content creators, also to content creators. Uh, because I think there's there's value uh, in what a, what I'll talk about for, for both you know types of people and eventually you may become content creators anyway and we'll all be content content creators and that'll just, that'll just be the the way it is um, but but in the first video I, I talked about my uh, inability to uh, be in front of the camera and I'm still not very good because I'm looking at the screen and there's the camera right there see my finger that's the camera lens and it's hard to look at I don't know what to look at. So, you know, TikTok, I, I spoke of that in the last video where it's getting me more of a, a climatized in front of the camera and uh, I still don't feel very confident, but that's going to grow. Uh, but the, the thing that I wanted to really talk about is how you grow uh, into your online digital persona. Who, who you see in this video is technically me and I want to capture it for you uh, in the moment on this couch as best I can, but once uh, I leave this couch, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm growing as a person, so I want to talk about the concept of, uh, uh, I guess, artistic and digital growth uh, when it comes to making content, so, because eventually you're going to tackle the fact that uh, if you get popular and more people see you, it's more probable that your friends and family will also see your content potentially and uh, you know w what do they have to say about that. So that, that's something that uh, you know uh, is it could be difficult to overcome for new content creators, people starting out for the first time, uh, younger people, older people, whoever is just starting out. Um, you know those are things to uh, o overcome with yourself. You just have to get through it. Um, I guess the only thing I really have to say is, uh, you know, suck it up. Uh, and that's, you know, aimed at me really is to just suck it up. You know, you, people are going to see this and they're, they're just, and they're going to, you know, th think what they think. And that's just, that's the way it is. But th that's, uh, you know, in the end, that's kind of the point. Um, I'm, I'm going to share uh, personal opinions uh, that uh, I guess can really only be shared in a setting like this where it's just me getting out uh, a lot of information in one blast. So, uh, you know, because it may, it could be difficult to, to get these ideas out, uh, you know, w with a real person maybe. I, I don't know. But it's just, it's just something, uh, you know, that I want to explore myself too. Uh, just, just talking about ideas in long form, uh, you know, really evaluating stuff. 
uh, critically. So, yeah, I don't know. But that was the uh, kind of first topic uh, I wanted to uh, kind of get into. Uh, so, so there it is. Uh, I, I guess if anyone sees this who knows me, uh, thank you for, for watching this. Uh, I guess that's the first thing to say. And uh, I, I don't... Um, I, I don't know what else to, to tell you. Uh, buy my barbecue. <laughs> uh, that's that's a TikTok joke from my TikTok. Oh, was, that was a stupid joke. Uh, anyways, the TikTok is the next uh, agenda item. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I've already talked about y using it for um, getting comfortable on camera. But I find a lot of cool things happen on TikTok that uh, give me something to talk about for, for these videos. I see things on there that's uh, interesting. It's the pulse of the world right now. It's such a, it's one of the most dominant uh, media video platforms that you can get on a phone device, like a portable device. You know, b b so many people have it. Uh, well, not everybody, of course, but uh, enough people have it to warrant trying it out for the first time. And you just, you see trends, you see virality happen in real time, you see a video, you comment on it, and then before you know, your comment has exploded, the video has exploded, uh, it's all over the internet. And so it's really cool to see that, be a part of that in action. It's kind of like being, being there in the gold rush, uh, you know, for the first time. So it, it's, it's pretty exciting, and, um, you know, kind of back to what I, I wanted to talk about, it, uh, it gives you, there's lots of things that you find out. P people talk about the, the wildest things, and so uh, that's really the, the next topic we're going to get into on my list, so we stay on track. <gasps> Excuse me. That oatmeal. Okay, so, uh, Shotgun Farmers. This is what I saw on TikTok. It, it's an indie first-person shooter game. And uh, it just, it really, it really gripped me when I saw the, this uh, video that basically um, it's just this person making a video about the, uh, the in-game gun mechanics that are part of this game called Shotgun Farmers. I guess it's an independent developed game that a lot of people are playing right now. And uh, I want to talk about that uh, with, the, with the game mechanics. There, there's a game mechanic in this game that is uh, very interesting. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, in the description in the video, have a link for a bunch of videos that are uh, of people playing playing the game in groups. It's a, it's a multiplayer game, and so I haven't seen any of these videos. Uh, I haven't uh, seen much of the game, and so what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about the mechanic that I find interesting, and just see what we can uh, kind of uh, unpack, and then uh, it, I guess as sort of a social experiment or, or something. Uh, you can go watch those videos and maybe see how how accurate or inaccurate. Uh, that is of what we talked about, because uh, I think game mechanics change how people play the games. At least game mechanics that they're done well. Um, and to elaborate on game mechanics, I I find that uh, game mechanics alone are the most important part of the video games. Um, not to uh, date myself, but you know, be uh, being in mid thirties, uh, <clears throat> I've experienced a lot of video games. Uh, you know, I've seen all, all the all the gaming systems evolve through time, and so um, not that I am any different than anyone else my age, but uh, I at least have a, a, a particular opinion on um, how games uh, evolved. And so, so for me, when I look at games throughout history, game mechanics are the number one thing uh, that I pay attention to personally. And that's what was so interesting for me uh, in that TikTok video, and that's why we're, we're going to talk about that. Uh, so, game mechanics. Um, in Shotgun Farmers, uh, the, the thing that impressed me was that the, the guns that you have, that you're using in the game, are shaped like uh, uh, the food. So, your, your shotgun is a big thing of corn. Uh, and so, here's the thing. You shoot the ground with your corn or food uh, plant gun, and it grows another gun. How cool is that? You don't... I, I guess in the game you can't uh, reload your ammo. You can't get more ammo unless you grow more ammo. So that's that's pretty cool. And uh, that that's what gripped me because it made me think, okay, wow, so you, you don't uh, collect items to reload your weapons. You have to grow your... You have to grow them in, in the ground. 
and so that was a that was a pretty cool concept, uh, a very interesting game mechanic that uh, hasn't really been explored in the first person shooter yet. Because when you think of all the first person shooters that have guns and weapons, you would pick up an item uh, or another gun off the ground or something, and that reloads your weapon. So you're you're collecting things. Uh, to reload, but in this you have to grow them out of the ground by shooting them to reload your weapon So so that that's that's pretty different um, it, it was just uh, I was I was almost flabbergasted and thinking like look whoa like, uh, oh, oh my god um, You know what if this mechanic becomes something bigger than uh, it is and and then immediately I was thinking, well, how is that going to change the gameplay of the people playing shotgun farmers? So that let, let's talk about that, right? So how uh, so you shoot the ground to grow your gun. So I I guess that would yeah, like how how would that uh, how would that affect things? So I, I guess the first thing we can talk about is. I guess the game itself, it, it, it seems like it's just a multiplayer deathmatch game where um, multiple people just play it. Uh, you know, I, I guess there's probably a deathmatch setting where it's teams against teams or or uh, every, every person for themselves, a, a battle royale or, or something. Uh, there's probably like capture the flag or some other game modes, uh, I guess. Uh, if you're a fan of like Team Fortress and those types of games, there's, there's game modes, so... You, uh, I don't know if you're. I don't know if you'd be familiar with that. You probably probably would be if you played, uh, you know, any f first person shooter game. So I think that mechanic would affect the game mode. Or the game mode uh, w would affect uh, the mechanic potentially. So if you think about it, uh, I guess let's first maybe talk about it in in a deathmatch setting where you're just you're facing each other, right? So to uh, defeat your opponent you need to shoot them and so you need to have ammo to do that so I, I, I imagine that that would be the most uh, uh, applicable game setting or game mode that would ha use that mechanic well or uh, force the players to change how they play a, a first person shooter game uh, to play a little bit differently so you know I could see players growing in a certain area or saving Ammo, uh, and then I guess maybe the other player can take your weapons too. They can come and get them. Maybe I, I don't know if, I, if if you can or not. Uh, I think there's a time limit on how they grow out of the ground. So I mean, it's it's almost like emulating a uh, like a real uh, cob of corn growing out of the ground. You know, if it stays too long, it's going to rot and be no good. So so there's I think there's a time limit. Uh, as to how long you can harvest it. Maybe there's a quality level to it. Maybe if it's small, you only get a little bit of ammo or, or something. Uh, but then also consider, too, uh, the hierarchy of weapons, right? In all first-person shooter games, there's, there's weapons that are really good and really powerful. You know, like the rocket launcher in Halo, right? It's, it's like a one-shot kill almost, or uh, sniper rifles, things like that. So I, I imagine uh, if you are trying to hit your opponent and you miss, uh, they can potentially get that uh, 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 weapon that is, is a powerful weapon. So I guess you have to consider those types of things too. Uh, so, so that's interesting. And uh, again, it, you know, coming back to uh, how you're har harvesting and collecting ammo, you know, maybe if you're on a team, you can store your ammo in a certain way. And then I guess you have to also ask, what are the starting weapons like? You know, do you, uh, do you get a particular weapon when you start, or do you have to find a weapon as you start? You start with no weapons. Uh, some games did that. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, an example. Uh, GoldenEye, I think, would be something that we, we could maybe relate to, because uh, we'll talk about something related to that in a moment. Because I think in, in some death matches you start off with no weapons and you just find a weapon, and that's that. So so maybe there's there's that sort of element to uh, consider. Like, is are you starting off with a weapon? How do you get other weapons? Do do they are they found in certain ways? Do they spontaneously grow out of the ground? Or uh, I I don't know. Like I, I mean I've never I haven't seen the game yet, so you'll have to uh, uh, report back to me in in the comments or. Uh, something to to that, and you know, uh, I guess let me know, or I'll, I'll I'll probably watch the videos after this anyways, and I'll find out myself, and 
that that'll be that. So yeah, there there's that, and um, so I think that's probably as far as we can go with how you get weapons. Uh, maybe we can talk about how this works with uh, I guess the deathmatch setting in how how long it takes to defeat an opponent. Um, so yeah, let's talk about Goldeneye, right? So if you if you remember playing Goldeneye. It was sort of difficult to defeat your, your opponent. You, you had a, a lot of life. You could get body armor to extend your life. You had the peripherals around that showed you your life when you get hit, which was actually pretty cool. Uh, and, and I remember playing Goldeneye that it, it, it took a while to, to defeat somebody if you're playing the regular game mode. Uh, and then if you played the license to kill game mode, I think that's right. It was like a one-shot kill. That was pretty cool, by the way. Uh, that was one of my favorite modes to play with uh, friends. You, you use pistols and uh, license to kill and that was that was awesome so yeah maybe there's that right like how how much life do you have in the game like is, is it difficult to defeat your your opponent because um, if it's easier to defeat your opponent and you start off with a weapon then you may not need to use that weapon too much to, to defeat somebody and so maybe the mechanic won't mean as much for that reason so there's there could be that um, and then that can maybe possibly change in other game modes. So, you know, if you think about maybe capture the flag or something like that, uh, I guess the, the, the mechanic can be treated differently in that way too. Because one person's got to get the flag and bring it, so they're not going to be shooting a lot. And, um, you, your team is, uh, you're working with your team, so is the team, uh, you know, sort of farming, or, or yeah, farming a shotgun farm is a good name, right? Uh, are they collecting ammo in a certain way? So, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And then, um, are there other game modes that I, I don't know about? You know, or is there new game modes within the game that are, are new uh, to explore? Uh, so... Yeah, I, I think that has a potential to be a pretty cool, pretty cool mechanic. But but I guess it really all all depends on the the, the gamers themselves playing with it uh, in real time. Because that's that's the real uh, that makes or breaks it, right? You can theorize and talk about a game mechanic and think, oh yeah, it's going to be really really good. But then when it's applied and uh, real people use it, it changes, right? So um, yeah, that, I guess that's the the why I wanted to talk about it like this anyway, is to see how to see what theorizing can do to a mechanic versus what actually happens in the game because I think that's interesting you know there's uh, uh, that's just kind of how game mechanics are right they, they, they get uh, manipulated and changed and I guess that kind of speaks to the the people who play video games right uh, you know when you play video games you're always optimizing thinking of the best way to play it to beat your opponent or beat, beat the computer or the game or, or whatever so you have to manipulate the the in-game mechanics the rules of the game uh to beat it so yeah that, that that's pretty interesting so you know maybe we'll see how that works so uh i, th I think that's about all all we can really talk about i guess um you know, just just those f few examples uh, talking talking about uh, I guess starting weapons, how how fast you you can kill an opponent, uh, how the game modes affect the, the mechanic, and then just uh, uh, I guess you can then just s see how how it works out. I guess so, yeah, that that's the I guess the last thing you can just let happen, and. Um, I guess to kind of talk about the future, if, if this mechanic is, um, I guess, successful or, or uh, uh, interesting or, or useful, how, how, how is it going to get used, used in other games? Uh, you, know, you can easily just uh, copy the concept and reprogram the mechanic in a, in a different first-person shooter game. Uh, you know, write a story around it, I don't know, uh, make it futuristic, uh, I don't know, like, uh, you know, if... If you're a game maker, and you you may very well be a game maker, uh, you know I'm sure you can just come up with uh, some fu futuristic concept to uh, make that mechanic work that isn't shotgun farmers, right? Because shotgun farmers is uh, set in a farm; it's sort of cartoony, and so yeah, you shoot the ground and uh, a gun grows. So that it's it's embedded into the setting of the game and the surroundings of the game. So if you were a game creator, how can you just change that and do a variation? Um, 
uh, on the mechanic to make your vision work. Uh, you know, maybe it's just like a future, uh, futuristic VR thing, and uh, people go into a, a, a VR game and um, they compete. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a futuristic world. Uh, you know, like people watching a game show, like you know, the Running Man movie, uh, where people are watching these people compete in real life, but instead of real life, it's uh, Esports, like video games, right? So you're kind of uh, leaping a little bit, f not too far in the future, but you know, far enough that you can make this premise work as a video game. And I don't know, you can do commentary on real life in, in that way. So I don't know, you you could just make up whatever you want to make this mechanic work in the game. So you know, it has that potential to to uh, grow and change uh, outside of that game. You know, because when you just do, when you deal with game mechanics, they're they're just conventions of, of video games, right? They, they they can be explored by by in, in other games, you know, like say Mario Brothers. It's a two D side scroller. How many two D side scrollers are there? There's there's a ton. Uh, you're jumping on things, um, running, dodging. So you know, there's all of that sorts of stuff, right? So so uh, video games evolve uh, and change over time. Uh, one me you know one mechanic that can be introduced in one game can be used later down the road to reinvent uh, a, a whole genre. Um, yeah, so, you know, that, that's what I, I think about, uh, I was thinking about that, I was thinking, well, how, how, you know, if that mechanic was really useful, how, how could it be used in other video games potentially in the future? And, um, you know, if you're, if you're clever as a video game a, a creator, coder, or, you know, whatever it takes, I'm sure it wouldn't be uh, uh, too much to make that happen. Um, yeah, I, I think that's cool, you know, the, the world is so uh, connected that, uh, uh, ideas are, are just, they're so fluid, you know, you can just uh, borrow ideas and that, that's a musical concept too, you know, uh, you know, you, you can hear something and put a variation on it, uh, you know, you don't want to copy things and be plagiar, do, do plagiarism, that's, that's not, that's not the point, the point is evolving from past uh, inventions to create something new using multiple things of the past to make something new in the future. That that's that's the the point. That's you know uh, when you deal with appropriation uh, in various ways that you can do that. That's kind of the 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 underlining thing is take something old and make something new with it. Um, yeah. So 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 there you, there you go. I guess the shotgun farmers. Um, yeah, go play it. Uh, I don't know if you have to buy it or if it's free. Uh, yeah, I guess you'll find out in the videos. So yeah, go check that out. Um, Okay, so that's that. Oh, I guess I'll have some water. I'm thirsty. Okay. All right, the next thing we'll talk about is playlists, music. I, I love music. Yeah, you know, that's my passion. Yeah, I wish I could do m music more. Uh, you know, but you know, that's, that's where we are right now. So the, the, the playlist. Uh, what I did, uh, uh, I, I just did this uh, recently, is I, I made uh, just YouTube playlists of, of uh, basically mixtapes that I had when I was younger. Uh, I named them the, the Millennium Playlists, uh, and there's, there's six of them, so there's quite a bit of music. And these are just mixtapes I, I made w when I was younger, uh, you know, as a teenager um, in the late 90s going into the early 2000s. So it's, it's music from, you know, the, that time period as well. I would see a lot of music on Much Music, and I would just write, write song names down on paper and save it so that I could remember the, the song. Because uh, that's just, that's how it was, you know, back then, right? You, you couldn't... Uh, it wasn't on a computer, couldn't save it. It was on TV, and that you, you saw it once, and that was it. So um, yeah, I, I kept I kept uh, notes around uh, like that. So that's where all these uh, the songs came from. And, and I would watch the Much Music Show Loud on Fridays. It was uh, it was an hour long. I think it was around seven p.m. And it was just an hour of like uh, metal and sort of like underground uh, rock, uh, metal, hard rock. Stuff that really isn't mainstream, but it's really metal based. Um, and I would watch that show every Friday and just, just watch like really cool uh, metal music videos. Uh, you know, like Pantera, uh, Sepultura, I'm trying to think of other, other bands. I don't know, like uh, Machine Head. Uh, yeah, like, you know, stuff like that, uh, stuff that was really big in the late 90s uh, that just wasn't mainstream, so they, they made a separate program for it. 
And so I would uh, just write again, write down some of the bands, and uh, I would try to try to make mixtapes uh, in any way I could with the technology I had at that time. And so all of these playlists are are basically co just collections of songs uh, that that I, I came across in, in that way and other ways too. Uh, you know, I eventually got the internet around the, the late '90s, and uh, I would try and make uh, you know these these. Uh, mixtapes uh, through that way too so it's just a collection of music from uh, I guess it's the 80s 90s and 2000s so that that time period um, I guess about 20 years worth of, uh, of music uh, it's just it's really just a uh, rock hard rock metal uh, and I think it's pretty cool and uh, I guess the point I want to make is that I was able to find all of those songs on YouTube and make the playlist uh, you know they're they're all properly licensed now in the descriptions through their parent labels, uh, so it's all it's all legal now basically. It's all it's all all the legal problems of music uh, have been sort of ironed out uh, around 2020. So that, that's kind of a cool thing to step back and and see because we were in the early 2000s we were at a very strange point in uh, music distribution uh, when you consider you know Napster and file sharing and all that. It was fairly, uh, there was a lot of turmoil, but it seems like now with streaming services, you know, like Spotify, YouTube, it's sort of been ironed out and things have been, uh, I guess, fairly steady. And so the fact that, that I found every single one of those songs on YouTube, uh, it kind of says something about the, how far YouTube's come as a platform and how far the, the music industry uh, has actually evolved. Um, because the music industry as a whole kind of gets a bad rap sometimes when you when you talk about it as being sort of a, almost a dinosaur and slow to evolve, but it, it is evolving. Like it is, it is doing it. Just uh, you know, I guess fairly slowly. But because these playlists uh, can now exist in in a new format, that's sort of a testament to the fact that. Uh, uh, the music distribution platforms, the, the labels themselves, uh, the music industry as a whole has has evolved, and it, it's fantastic. Like it, it's incredible, you know. Um, it, it's it's it, when I think back to the time that I, I made those uh, lists and uh, playlists, it, it was a different time. You couldn't really experience those songs in that order without significant work. Now it's it's a, it was a piece of cake to make those playlists. I search for the songs, made the playlist, boom, it was, uh, it was done pretty quick. So, so that's something to say. Uh, the, the other thing I think I, we can talk about is uh, YouTube versus Spotify. Uh, Spotify. So I, I, I attempted to, to make these playlists on Spotify and I wasn't able to find all the songs. So that, that, I guess that kind of says something about uh, where YouTube is compared to Spotify in terms of what is available and how easy uh, you can access it if you're on a computer. I guess uh, portable devices mean much more than they have in, in the past. Uh, they're they're a, a dominant form of media, your your phone, your your handheld device. Uh, but maybe I'll make more uh, a playlist that combines all of it and, and put it on Spotify so that you can you can check it out. Um, but yeah, I noticed that, and so it made me think. Uh, oh, so maybe Spotify doesn't have everything. It has a lot, uh, and it's. I've just started using it within the last few months, and it's been a, a pretty cool experience. Uh, look at me embracing technology and all that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyways. Um, but yeah, there, there's that to become elated about. Uh, just just the fact that, you know, I, I can remake these playlists uh, in a new way and give them life. So I hope you enjoy them. Uh, it, it's cool music. Uh, the, the, it sort of flows through nicely. There's a lot of cool bands uh, that uh, I was interested in back then and that I still uh, listen to. I, I like a whole bunch of music. I, I'm not uh, particular on one. I mean, well, I guess I am. I, I'm more biased towards metal because that's where I started. But I, I still like everything. You know, I, I've had a musical education that has given me experience with a, a lot of different genres and all that. But yeah, if you if you dig metal. Uh, I think you'll like it, so I'm going to put a link for that uh, in the description below as well. So you're going to have uh, the Shotgun Farmers links, uh, a few uh, affiliate links for Amazon, and then the playlist link. That'll just take you to my website where I curated a little bit. 
and then those just link back to YouTube anyway, so you just you'll go in a circle. Uh, but at least when you get to my uh, web page in the article, they'll be all there for you to see, so you can kind of pick and choose which one uh, easily. All, it's all sort of annotated with each uh, list of songs. So it, maybe it's just easier for you uh, in that way. So I'll have that uh, in the uh, link below. And uh, I guess we're almost done. Let me just check the, the time to see where we're at here. I don't want to go too long. Uh, okay, well, it's been about 40, 40, uh, 40 minutes, I guess. I, I don't know. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess the final thing is, uh, you know, talking about affiliate marketing, right? You know, I joked about having the, uh, the Rubbermaid uh, water bottle, which I'll drink from now because I'm thirsty. Woo! Talking is hard. Did I say that already? I probably did. Talking is difficult. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'll put, <laughs> I've, I've got that, I jokingly put that in uh, as an affiliate link from, from Amazon because it, it appears in the video, right? Uh, you know, hey, there it is. But the other thing I'm going to do is put the uh, link for the camera that I'm using in, in, the, in the description below. Because uh, you, you can't see the, this camera. It, it, you, well, I guess you're in it. Like you're, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know, you're. You're, view, you're viewing it from, from the camera's lens, so I, I don't have another camera to show you the camera, so, uh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, I, I don't expect you to, to uh, buy it, but I'm going to just put it in there uh, as like a more of an informational note so that you know um, the type of camera I'm using. Uh, it's a Canon... Oh, I actually wrote this down. I feel like an idiot now. It's a, a Canon... It's, it's, a, it's a Canon model. Uh, I, I got it a while ago. It, it's a pretty decent camera. Uh, I've used it for a lot, uh, especially in my music career. Uh, so uh, it's lasted quite a long time, so I can I can at least attest to the durability and quality of the product. So maybe that means something if you're, you know, uh, curious. So uh, what cameras can I use? It's it's like a handheld camera too, so you can ha uh, hold it and stuff. The microphone is pretty decent on it. Um, it's right on the front. I've recorded live music with the camera using just the mic, and it's not too bad. Uh, I mean, it's not not the best, but if you were to record something live, like a, say your band practice, which is what we did, uh, you'll be able to hear everything. You'll be able to hear the things you need to hear, uh, which is uh, kind of it, right? And uh, I would actually use uh, that footage if you were a band right now and you're you know, th thinking of content, like film film your rehearsals and just put that up on YouTube. Uh, I think that's cool content to uh, to watch, even though the music could be unformed or raw. I think that's that's going to be more valuable now. So 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 often uh, content that comes out is you know pristine and perfect, uh, edited well, has lots of graphics. Um, there, there's now a, an appeal for lo-fi, like a low-quality uh, content that is kind of off the cuff and raw. There, there, there's a, a, a an aesthetic to it. There's sort of a beauty, I guess you can say, to that type of content. So I don't know. So it's something to think about. Uh, I only say that because uh, you know I can tap into my music uh, experience, and uh, you know maybe that kind of gives you a. a uh, an idea, you know, if, if you're uh, kind of wondering, well, how how can you share share content? Just uh, share 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 your rehearsals. You know, record yourselves. You know, practice being in front of the camera because um, it's hard. <laughs> I'm still not used to it. I'm still looking at the thing, so I'm not looking at the camera like I should. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll have the camera link uh, in there. I'm using a Dynex stand. It was a DXTRP60 made in China. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they have that stand in the associates list, but I'll, you know, I'll put another stand in there that's similar to this. Because you need a you need a camera stand along with the camera. That's just uh, that's what you need. Uh, well, what else can we can we talk about? Because we're sort of at the end of uh, the list. I guess another thing to point out too is that I'm I'm still learning, uh, you know, the affiliate marketing landscape. Amazon uh, Associates program seems to be the the biggest and most reputable. 
Um, cause you then, cause you do have to tackle the idea that if you're using other affiliate, uh, source or affiliate marketing links from other sources, uh, you know, you have to gauge the reputation and stuff. So, so there's that. And, uh, you know, I'm not still really 100% sure how, how, how much of a disclaimer you, you need to, to say to people, uh, cause anyone can join the, the associates program. So it feels awkward, um, sometimes putting links out when you could be doing it yourself very easily if you just have a domain registered, basically. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I don't know. There's, there's things that uh, I'm still trying to, to figure out. Uh, and so, you know, just talking about it like this maybe will be helpful uh, for anyone to try to understand along with me. And, you know, I can talk to myself in this setting and figure it out for myself, too. So, you know, there's that. Um, yeah, so it's hard, it's hard to know, you know, what level of disclaimer do you need uh, uh, to do that. And then, you know, you, you think about competition uh, a little bit too because, you know, it's, it's not that uh, you, you want to uh, uh, be super competitive, but you have to understand the, uh, there, there is a level of competition for someone's attention. Uh, certain videos get more uh, views. So that's, that's kind of the way it is. And so... Um, if something's more popular, you may never see this, uh, or you won't ever come across this as, as well. So I, I don't really know where I'm going with this. I kind of just, I thought I just started, I would start talking about that. <laughs> I guess that'll happen is we stick to this format as like a one, one, one take shot thing. We're, we're bound to get silly at some point and talk about stuff that goes, goes nowhere. But, uh, yeah, you know, the Amazon Associates, you know, why not uh, get into that? Well, I guess I'm really speaking to, to people, if someone's watching this and they're not, that they don't know about content creation or affiliate marketing. Uh, it, it's not difficult, uh, but, but it is, uh, you, you have to learn skills that are uh, rooted in entertainment. And so... You know, using my music background has been somewhat helpful in a way, but, uh, you know, I'm still having to reinvent myself in, in a lot of other ways, too. So, so know that, right? Uh, it's, 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 anyone can do it, um, but uh, it, it, it takes some work. So I guess just uh, I'll, I'll kind of end on that. Well, do we have anything more to talk about? We did... Oh, well, there's maybe... Let's see how much time we have, actually. Mm, uh, I don't know if we can... Well, we, we already kind of talked about how valuable YouTube has become as a content platform and how much content there is on it and, and all that. Uh... But I, th I think that's all I want to talk about for, for now. I, I didn't want to make this video super long. Um, but I'll just I'll leave it on that note. YouTube is uh, pretty amazing. And I'm just sort of understanding, uh, you know, it's, it's true power. You know, I've watched YouTube uh, since, the, since it was, I guess, created or, or what have you, but, uh, you know, I've seen it evolve, and so have you, I imagine. Um, you've probably been paying attention to it just as long as I have, but, but it's changed a lot, hasn't it? It's come a long way. Uh, so, you know, how fantastic is that? Uh, you know, I think a lot of people should, you know, be content creators if they have the time for it. Because uh, I guess in a way, by making a video, you sort of are carving out a piece of digital real estate for, for yourself. Um, and so that, that's a pretty cool concept, right? So, you know, you, you become uh, immortally digitized almost. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you make a video and it's going to stay there for as long as... Uh, it stays there, so that that's a pretty uh, a wild idea and something to have uh, that is also your identity too. Um, I don't know, and I guess that kind of wraps around back to content creating 
from that perspective, you know, pe lots of people are going to see it. Your, your family could eventually see it. It's there for a long time. It could be deleted, I guess, by YouTube at some, you know, for, for any various reasons. Um, but yeah, that, how, how, how cool is that? You know, you, you can, you can put up a video and have it stay there for a long time and then it has the potential to go viral. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm trying to get at. Uh, I don't know if I'm trying to sell you on the concept of content, being a content creator or, or what. I, I don't know. I, I just think it's a, it's a really cool thing to, to be a part of right now and to experience yeah, as a content creator. I guess it just makes you think about the future too. Like, where where is where are a lot of people's jobs going to be uh, in the future? There, I'm seeing there's there's a lot more uh, marketing um, opportunities that are basically for content cr creation. So, yeah, I, I don't know if that's a sales pitch to for this, and I I don't even know you know why I'm getting into that, but uh, I don't know, just something to talk about, I guess. Well. Uh, I guess that's it. It's getting dark out. Here in Canada, it gets dark around this time. What time is it now? It's just about 5 o'clock. On uh, what day? On a Wednesday, January the 8th, 2020. So yeah, it's 5 o'clock. Yeah, I guess we'll wrap this up. So if you stuck around for the whole video, thank you. Uh, I appreciate uh, your viewership um, and I hope you got something out of this too uh, you know by me sharing myself with you maybe that uh, gives you insight I, I don't know the uh, long-term effect of me doing sharing myself with you so I, I at least hope it provides value to somebody uh, around the world to you know hear me talk about uh, uh, my, my opinions, how I see the world, because I guess really this, if we talk more about the format, it's kind of boiling down to how I uh, see the world. Because um, I, I maybe I, I think I just want to preserve um, maybe my generation of uh, of uh, people, people my age, right? Like people born in the '80s, grew up in the '90s, transitioned to two thousand, seeing technology evolve. It, it's a pretty cool thing. And so, uh, I, I guess that insight, uh, I don't know, I feel like it could be valuable down the road, uh, you know, because history repeats itself. That was one concept I, I remember talking about in the last video, so, yeah, who, who knows, maybe, maybe this is for posterity, uh, and really it's more meant for, for people to see uh, in a few years, uh, or, or whatever, in a few months, I, I don't know. But uh, I guess that's why... Um, I talk about the things I talk about in the way that I talk about them, and that's the point of the new do review. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, there it is. Uh, all right. Yeah. So, so thank you again uh, uh, for sticking around this far, and we'll see how some of the new videos uh, turn out and uh, how we evolve and go forward and. And we'll just yeah we'll see we'll see where the the new year takes us. Uh, enjoy the music that are in the playlist, and uh, hopefully we'll have something new some new do for you in the future. All right, okay, bye.